everyone. We are excited to give this workshop on Voices Together and intercultural materials um, within Voices Together and from the Mennonite World Conference songbooks. I'm going to start by giving us just an overview of what is in Voices Together and what Voices Together actually is. So you can see here in this photo, it's a suite of project uh, products. We've got the Him um, Pew edition, which is the one in the middle here. That's the one that most communities will have in their churches. Um, then we've got an accompaniment edition, a worship leader edition, um, a large print edition, an app edition, a projection edition. There's a range of versions that churches across Mennonite Church Canada and Mennonite Church USA have been adopting. The project was completed um, in 2020 and, and was available for churches to begin using in late 2020. Obviously something we never anticipated was launching the Voices Together hymnal during a pandemic. And so some editions like the projection edition and the app edition have been especially, especially helpful as communities have been doing virtual worship. The committee that put Voices Together began um, together began meeting in 2016, um, and we screened a range of resources to put the collection together, and I'll just walk you through a little bit of what's actually in the hymnal. So, of course, there are uh, about 800 songs in Voices Together. Um, this is an example of what it looks like on the page. Um, it looks fairly similar to Hymnal Worship Book, which was um, the previous um, hymnal from 1992. Uh, you can see one exciting addition is guitar chords or keyboard chords, chord symbols at the top of each line. Um, so this is one way that it's a little bit more accessible to instrumentalists. Um, in general, though, it, it, it's, a, it's a fairly standard hymn page with some exciting additions, though. Um, like the other hymnals, there are, or like 1992, there are worship resources at the back of the collection. Um, this is the first worship resource in the book that I'm just highlighting as it um, in particular talks about um, intercultural, it highlights different languages, especially languages used by Mennonite communities in Mennonite Church Canada and Mennonite Church USA. So it shows us how to say peace be with you in these various languages, um, which is one really exciting uh, resource, but it's also just an example of a worship resource, which is like a spoken uh, resource for worship. Then something else that's really exciting in Voices Together is the inclusion of visual art. So you can see two examples on this page. There are 12 works of visual art throughout the collection, um, spaced throughout the whole hymnal. And that's an example of, of including our Anabaptist artists in the project and highlighting the ways that visual art are also part of our worship experiences. So I just want to take a moment to highlight how songs were chosen for Voices Together. The infographic that you see on the screen is also available on the Voices Together website, which is voicestogetherhymnal.org. Um, you can also find a similar graphic to this that highlights how worship resources were chosen if you visit the website as well. So along the left hand side here with the gold panel, you can see um, we've got, uh, we had 10,000 early submissions, um, which went down to 775 songs and voices together. So on the top left, you can see that we pulled material for voices together from current collections, hymnal worship books, sing the journey and sing the story. Um, you can see those years there from 1992 to 2007. So all uh, songs from those books are all incorporated into Voices Together. Not all of them. Many of them are in Voices Together. We had a process of committee screening by which we looked at um, submissions from our submission portal. So anyone could submit a song for consideration in Voices Together. We also screened single author collections that were recently published, other hymnals. Um, global songbooks, we'll talk about that more in a minute, contemporary worship music, these kinds of things um, as well. And then a number of those, 6,000 of those resources went to full committee review, um, where we reviewed songs anonymously, giving them a one to five star rating. And then we had full person, uh, full in committee in-person discussion. Um, these were highlights, I imagine Benjamin and Katie would also say, getting to meet together as a committee and go over the contents of the hymnal, um, deciding what's what are, what are drawbacks, what are merits of different resources, what are things we need to consider, and so there were 1,600 of those that we discussed in person. Informing those in-person discussions, 
were a range of consultant groups and you can see on the right hand side in that blue box it lists some of them from Spanish language to African American to American Sign Language to camp songs to interfaith resources. There was a really broad range of groups that um, gave input on the, the resources that we were going to be um, using for Voices Together. So we, we always had their voices um, as part of these discussions. Then the editorial team made a lot of really hard decisions about what, what should be in the final version of Voices Together, the final product. Um, so they were attentive to balancing different musical styles, different text styles, balancing different things, looking at what the committee ratings were, um, keeping in mind what the consulting groups had said, these kinds of things. Um, and that pink box at the bottom right indicates um, some of the things that they were trying to balance, heart song, um, survey data, asking folks, what are the what are the heart songs for you? What are the songs that are really meaningful? Or geographic balance across um, the collection, these kinds of things. We also had two other committees that were informing those editorial team decisions, the Tune and Accompaniment Committee, the Text Committee, um, and they, they both uh, offered input on what new tunes might be, what would be revisions to texts, what kind of accompaniments do we need, these kinds of things. And then you can see at the bottom, finally, 775, um, that's how many songs we ended up with, and that went through um, copy editing, engraving, proofreading, um, those final steps, and then the collection was printed. So it's been a very long process um, to, to get voices together to folks, and there have been a lot of voices that have been involved, um, offering input on different sides of the, of the collection. One of the things we've been particularly attentive to is how we represent music from very, around the world, um, especially from the Mennonite World Conference songbooks um, and other kind of global songbooks, uh, and, and then considering how voices together can be a tool to facilitate intercultural relationships. So I'm going to turn it over to Benjamin now to tell us a little bit more about the Mennonite World Conference songbooks. So as you're likely aware, um, singing together has been a really important part of assemblies. And um, so I wanted to take just a step back and look at some of that progression of how that has been documented and um, prepared in preparation for the gathered assemblies. And then, and, and Katie then will sort of take that and look at how that has been an important piece in um, putting together parts of Voices Together and interacting with that global relationship of sharing songs. So um, it's often known that the first international songbook was from 1978, but that doesn't mean that it was actually the first collection of songs or even the first set of singing in um, gathered assemblies for Mennonite World Conference. The first um, sort of hymn collection uh, appears to be from 1962 being the first one. So of course, assemblies began in 1925. Uh, there was likely singing proceedings uh, following those assemblies indicate that there was a chorister, there was some singing, there were even choirs that were a part of it. Um, but the first collection of hymns was in this book from 1962 for the um, for the seventh conference in Kitchener, Ontario. And it is a, a small collection full of uh, traditional European hymns in text only. Um, so that would have been uh, a first collection of songs. It was um, succeeded in 1967 for the um, assembly in Amsterdam. And this one began to have um, musical notation in the form of the Western staff notation with a lot of uh, texts, of course, um, some translations, uh, although staying within the official Mennonite World Conference languages of that time. And the third that preceded the International Songbook, as that title uh, was used, the, the um, last one before that was for the ninth, assembly, which was in Brazil, and it's this sort of sideways collection um, that is text only as well. And um, although I don't know all of what would have been sung at the assembly in Brazil, uh, the collection in here at least indicates that it was all um, traditional European hymnody as well. Uh, although this now included 
translations into other languages, of course, notably Portuguese, the, the local language um, as sung at assembly. So then we get to the very first international songbook. So the idea in 1978, when it was um, again, or when this was in Wichita, also Canada, um, was by the compilers and editors, uh, Clarence Hebert and Rosemary Wise, the idea being, well, we're getting together as an international body, let's sing songs from all around the world. And so they, uh, this was their idea, sort of as a, a birth and planning uh, for this assembly. And so they spent quite a lot of time and realized the intricacies of, of learning and uh, networking around the world, keeping in mind this was 1978, so email was not an option. Uh, and they gathered songs from all five continents where there was representative Mennonites. And so this is our first um, entrance into an international songbook split by continent pages. And so this has, um, again, musical notation without text in it, and rather has the translations and things under or on subsequent, subsequent pages. So a revolution for Mennonite World Conference assemblies. And in fact, it was really well done that the next assembly in Strasbourg, France, decided to continue to use that collection and just print a small supplement, adding a few others because of it being in France, in Europe, uh, they wanted to add a few more that sort of dug into the um, songs of that area, the rich traditional um, European hymnody and added a uh, number of translations for uh, about 18 songs to sort of supplement the 1978 first international songbook. We move on then to 1990, where uh, they again created the second full international songbook. So still using songs that would have been sung in, in previous assemblies, but adding a lot more as well from all around the world, again, split by continent, uh, edited by Doreen Claussen um, and bringing her, her ethnomusicological background to um, add in more translations, more songs, but in a way that would, would have still been familiar to folks who had attended in the previous two assemblies. So that was 1990. And then we move into 1997, the next one, which was in Calcutta, India. And this book um, was curated from the 1990 songbook, as well as what had recently come out being the 1992 hymnal worship book. And so even though that was a North American collection, it was known for how it added into it songs from all around the world. And so the compilers of that 1992 collection had really sought to add um, songs that our siblings across the world were singing. And so the compilers for the 1997 assembly decided to take songs from the 1990 book and the hymnal worship book and then add in some translations and things. But by and large, it's actually just uh, facsimile copies of uh, either the 1990 book or hymnal worship book. And you'll notice that with, with one critical exception to that, the title of this book is Hear What the Spirit is Saying to the Churches, which is the first song, handwritten. And this song you will find, if you have not already sung it, depending on when you're watching this, at the um, current assembly in Indonesia. So this was written by a Mennonite bishop, Shant Kunjam, uh, and uh, you will find it in the 2022 assembly songbook in Hindi and English. And so um, we're grateful for all of these songbooks that have come before as a way of um, continuing to sing together that which we have learned while learning new things. And then we go on to 2003, where we were in Zimbabwe. And this lovely songbook edited by Marilyn Hauser Ham um, was. Uh, I believe the first one where um, she brought um, representatives to the songbook committee from each continent, making sure there was representation on the planning of the songbook um, from each continent. And interestingly, um, although the previous songbooks have all been in that staff notation, the 
uh, Western staff notation. This one had a few songs of tonic solfa uh, notation, which is um, what a number of uh, charts around the world um, are used, especially um, in parts of Africa, where it uses um, letters for, so the first line would be sopranos, altos, that's the text, tenors and basses, and the letter indicates which scale degree, do, re, mi, fa, so, et cetera, um, that part should be singing. And so um, it has both that tonic solfa uh, notation as well as um, the staff notation sheet music, um, which is also read by a lot of people too. So, um, and this has a lot of new songs, um, at least to the, the Bennett World Conference repertoire. Um, and so it sort of continued to build on this, what was happening and making it more and more global and internationally owned of a collection um, contributing to assemblies. So after that, we found ourselves in Paraguay. And um, so each time you can see there's a bit of a different layout or design uh, component, which is sort of fun to, to look at if, if, you're, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, so this was uh, compiled and edited by Paul Duick, who happened to also be a, a member of Voices Together Committee um, and lived much of his life in, in Mennonite community in Paraguay. And so this has um, many recognizable songs um, by the um, assembly goers, as well as a lot of new songs, especially um, Spanish speaking songs. Um, interestingly, this one is not organized by continent. Instead, it's integrated and somewhat thematic um, rather than regional based. Um, and it has, in addition to, of course, the more common languages spoken by members of Mennonite World Conference, including those original languages, uh, it also has a lot of translations for the local dialects, um, including the Enclet, Nivacle, and Guarani languages. And so that was a big push of, of this committee to draw in um, the host region of Paraguay, the many Mennonites there across the country in the Chaco and, and et cetera, um, to be a part of it and feel like they are hosting and can sing along, even if they don't know English or even a lot of Spanish. So that was, that was a, a cool thing there. Um, and, and also a number of songs for this were written um, for the theme. So there are a few original songs written specifically for this assembly and the theme of um, um, and, and the scripture passage that was used as sort of the foundation of that assembly. And then the last book uh, prior to our current assembly that we find ourselves in, it was in the United States in Pennsylvania in 2015. So this songbook that um, is a bit more um, close to a sort of standard hymnal shape, um, again, a lot of members from around the world contributing. Um, and this started to um, also, I think, look at some new as well as some um, beloved songs from around the world while also helping to just sort of show the host region. And so a number of things found in this book show a, a bit more of the um, breadth of musical traditions found in North America. So some indigenous songs, some songs from um, different communities across the US and Canada in particular. Um, and, and then of course, um, many others. And this is back grouped by continents, um, which I think is useful um, for, especially the evening worship services where we um, group those thematically by continent groups. And so it's, it's just interesting to see it that way. Um, although, as I was finding in working on this current collection uh, for 2022, it's a little bit, um, it, was, it was hard in some ways to decide on continent regions um, with how, uh, how used certain songs are all across the world and, and how beloved and um, at times even uh, collaboratively created. So um, that was an interesting thing about thinking, oh, maybe we shouldn't do continent groups, but it's, it's still useful. It's still uh, fun to see that, especially as the uh, diversity within a continent group has 
grown, I think, as well, or at least we are have become more aware of that. Um, and so, although as we're taping this, I do not have a current bound copy of the 2022 songbook, I have the um, sort of manuscript here. And I'll just name a couple things that you may have already been experiencing, but I would like the opportunity to say is one of the um, large and very obvious um, additions to this songbook is the incorporation of both Western staff notation and Eastern numeric notation on the majority of the songs. And so, for example, this is Hakuna Wakaita and in, in the staff notation, and then also in uh, numeric notation as well. And um, as we had heard from previous surveys and discussion through uh, Mennonite World Conference staff, we decided that uh, in particular with this songbook to continue to build on some of the favorites that have been used from around the world in previous um, assemblies and songbooks. While there's at least one new song from each continent, but the majority of new material comes out of the host continent in this case being Asia. And so you may find 10 new songs that you've never heard, um, especially if you are from a continent other than Asia. But even within, um, we had reached out to many of the conference leaders, church members, and musicians from around the uh, Asian conferences and sought to find songs that felt representative, beloved, uh, sung, and um, tried to use many of those songs in um, the creation of this songbook. And so you'll find a number of those um, in addition to a few others from, from other continents. So um, it has been a true privilege to look into the, you know, to build off of this rich history of how important singing is to assemblies, but also how important singing each other's songs is to assemblies. That this is, these books aren't just used uh, often just in the assembly, but they go back to their home congregations to be taught to their uh, communities. Mennonite World Conference staff and, and delegates continue to use them the years in between the gathered assemblies. And um, it's a way that we can um, learn each other's songs, um, but it also provides a difficulty, a challenge to feel like we can in 40 songs or less uh, <laughs> represent um, our, our very diverse body. And so that's a challenge, but um, it is a start and it's, it's a joy to do that together. So thank you. Oh, that was the wrong slide. Okay, here we go. Um, so Benjamin talked about the Mennonite World Conference songbooks, and, and perhaps it's obvious when you are together, singing together, why you need to have um, songs from around the world. But Voices Together is primarily a hymnal for North America, for um, USA and Canada, and primarily for congregations that worship in English. And so we have to really articulate why it is that we um, uh, do intercultural worship and why we should try singing these other songs and why Voices Together includes so many songs from around the world. So number one, we want to resource regional, national, international gatherings. So um, when, when more than one Mennonite congregation gets together, there's often more than just English. Um, but number two, even when there are is just one congregation, and even when English is the predominant uh, language, there are often some members who, who uh, grew up with another language or has spent time in another culture, and so it, um, singing songs from around the world can resource uh, just one congregation. Number three, even when there are is no one present that speaks a language other than English, we might we still want to acknowledge the the rest of the world and God's family. So we can sing songs in languages other than English to recognize events around the world, World Communion Sunday, or to pray for a natural disaster, or to celebrate an event happening somewhere else in the world. Number four, we um, can also recognize community specific connections to, to the world. Um, sister church uh, relationships 
or maybe a congregation is sending a service worker out into the world and you want to sing a song in that language to, um, to celebrate that connection. But number five is the most important, that we worship a God that is bigger than one culture and one language. And that's the real reason that we should always be reminding ourselves that English is not the only language that God can understand when we sing. How did we choose what to include in Voices Together? So first to back up and describe what Voices Together does include in terms of intercultural materials. Um, Voices Together includes the more than 20 languages that are used in worship in Mennonite Church USA and Mennonite Church Canada. And beyond that it includes uh, over 40 languages from around the world, from Mennonite and Anabaptist communities and beyond. And there are English songs and resources related to African American and indigenous communities and traditions. So how we chose those is that we, um, we got, got together many focus groups and asked individuals and they advised us on how to represent their music and their culture and their language and we asked many questions. And um, hearing from them and in looking at the variety of um, music, we wanted to try to balance musical styles and eras. So from one particular geographic location, we didn't only want the old traditional songs that maybe nobody sings anymore, but they are um, old beloved songs. We have some of those, and then we also have some new songs um, that are written very recently. Some are fusion styles in our globalized world. There are many, many songs that are um, written across uh, styles. So it might be more of a, the international popular sound rather than a, um, a specific uh, traditional sound from that area, but it's still a beloved song in that location. Where did we find global songs? We looked at Mennonite World Conference songbooks. So, um, <clears throat> Most of those, especially the ones that, that Benjamin showed, especially the ones that have notation, and especially the ones that um, once they started using, uh, including intercultural or songs from around the world, um, we, we screened all of those uh, songs. Um, there are also many ecumenical publications in North America, um, choral songbooks and other um, denominational hymnals, and then there are collections of Spanish language songs, collection of Chinese songs, collections, all, many different kinds of publications. Um, and then we made lots of congregational visits to Mennonite communities and made personal connections, as I mentioned, the focus groups and asking individuals to, to find out what was meaningful to, um, to different congregations. So these are just a couple examples. Um, so, so this slide and the next slide, I have a lot of numbers from Voices Together. So of course, this is primarily for the people who have Voices Together. You can write these down and look them up. Um, but also if you don't use Voices Together, um, it's just so that you can see the variety that, that is um, contained in Voices Together. So number 165 is a Chin language song. Chin is a language from uh, Myanmar. And then number 82 is an Indonesian song. And these are um, not written by Mennonites, but are um, heart songs of Mennonite congregations in uh, North America. Um, now this uh, list is all written by Anabaptists. And um, again, you can uh, pause this and write this down if you are a Voices Together user and want to look up all of these. But I have a couple um, uh, video examples to just show you a clip of these first two songs. So this first one is Kombo Na Yesu, um, written by the woman who you can see holding the microphone in this still shot. Um, her name is Stockwell Masamba and she uh, is a member of a congregation in California. The language um, is Lingala, which is from the Congo. And um, this congregation uses Lingala and French and English in their worship. And um, she wrote this song that I will just play a short clip.
So that's an example of a newly written song um, that um, within the last decade. And um, this next song, Da Pangaran, is an example of a song written by Satoyo Adi that was um, an Indonesian man. It was in a um, Mennonite World Conference songbook before it was in hymnal of worship book and then is now in Voices Together. So here's a short clip of this song. So that's just a very brief overview of, um, of the intercultural music in Voices Together. And um, we're glad you joined us today. And um, if you are joining the live session, we will have um, some more question and answer time now. <laughs>